this module, you'll learn about applying various types of conditional formatting rules. Conditional formatting can be used to help data stand out on the worksheet. We're going to look at some advanced features and you'll see how it can enable you to quickly locate data, find exceptions and spot trends. Open the workbook called Conditional Formatting from your Student Files folder. Turn to page 1 in your course book. Ensure the exams worksheet is uppermost as shown. As you can see, column C on this worksheet contains a set of examination marks for a class of students. We'll now use conditional formatting to quickly identify the top five marks in the class. Firstly, select cells C4 to C33, which contain the exam marks, as shown. Now, in the Styles group, on the Home tab, click on the Conditional Formatting button, as shown. A menu appears, showing the different types of rules and other options that can be used in conditional formatting and you'll be learning more about all of these during the module. To start, hover over Top Bottom Rules, and then in the sub-menu, click on Top 10 Items, as shown. Now turn to page 2. The Top 10 Items dialog box is displayed. And if you look at column C in the worksheet, you'll see that the highest 10 marks have been formatted with a light red fill colour and dark red text. This is the default format, and we'll leave it as it is. However, we only want to format the top 5 marks, so we'll change this now. Reduce the number from 10 to 5 by clicking on the down arrow in the dialog box as shown. As you do this, you'll see the impact of changing this setting on the worksheet, where only the highest 5 marks are now formatted. Click on OK to close the dialog box and click away to deselect the column and see the changes as shown in your course book. As you can see, this facility is very useful for locating values in a range of data, especially when it is a large data set. It is also possible to identify the lowest values, as well as the top and bottom percentages, and even those values which are above and below the average for the data set. Turn now to page 3. The next type of conditional formatting we're going to look at is data bars. This is where the length of the bar represents the value in a cell. The longer the bar, the higher the value, and you may be familiar with this. Firstly, we need to clear the previous formatting rule. To do this on the Conditional Formatting button, hover over Clear Rules and then click on Clear Rules from Entire Sheet, as shown. The conditional formatting has now been removed, and the worksheet should appear as it did when you first viewed it. This time, to apply conditional formatting to our data, we'll use the Quick Analysis tool. This feature provides us with easy access to some most popular data analysis options, including conditional formatting. So to start, select cells C4 to C33 once more. The Quick Analysis button appears in the bottom right-hand corner of the selection. Click on this now as shown. 
In the gallery that's displayed, formatting is the active heading, and this is what we want. Below, you can see some commonly used conditional formats, as well as the clear format option on the right. Click on Data Bars, as shown. Turn to page 4. Now click away to see how the data bars reflect the marks for each student in column C. You'll notice that the cells containing the higher values have the longest bars, and that the lowest values have shorter bars, as shown. Data bars can be a useful way to indicate comparative values in a worksheet. However, the bars are slightly obscured by the figures themselves. So to see the bars at their best, we'll remove the values. To make this change, click on the Conditional Formatting button, and then on Manage Rules at the bottom of the menu, as shown. Turn to page 5. In the dialog box which is displayed, click on the down arrow as shown and then select this worksheet. The lower part of the dialog box now shows the data bar rule that you've just applied. Click on the Edit Rule button as shown and then turn to page 6. The Edit Formatting Rule dialog box now appears and here you're able to change the type of rule and how it works. We want to show only the data bar and not the actual values, so select the Show Bar Only option as indicated. Now click on OK and then on OK again. The exam marks are no longer visible, and just the data bars are displayed, allowing you to clearly see the relative lengths of the bars, as shown in your course book. Turn to page 7. We'll now modify the width of column C to see what effect this has on the data bar conditional formatting which has been applied. Position your mouse pointer on the border between the headings for column C and D, and when the mouse pointer changes shape, as shown, press and holding down the mouse button, drag to the right. Release it when the column width is 15, as indicated in the screen tip. With the column width increased, the length of the data bars has also extended, and it's now easier to see the relative values. The next type of conditional formatting we'll look at is colour scales. This is where a two or three colour gradient is used, and the shade of the colour represents the relative value. Now click on the Temperatures worksheet as shown. The 2019 Worksheet tab should be active, and you can see that this shows the monthly temperatures recorded in five towns in southeast England. We will apply conditional formatting to make the temperature variations stand out more clearly. Firstly, you need to select the cell range where you want the formatting to be applied. So select cells B4 to M8 now, as shown. Turn to page 8. Click on the Conditional Formatting button, and then hover over the Color Scales option, as shown. The different color scales available are displayed. Select the colour scale shown in your course book. 
Click away to deselect and see the effect. The temperatures have been assigned relative shades, based on their values as shown. You'll see that the higher temperatures are shown in shades of green and the lower ones in shades of yellow and red. Because these values represent temperatures, it would be more appropriate to show the low temperatures in blue and the high ones in red. And we can do this by editing the conditional formatting rule. Click on the conditional formatting button once again and this time click on Manage Rules from the menu as shown. Now turn to page 9. Select this worksheet as you did before and then with the Graded Color Scale rule displayed click on the Edit Rule button as shown. In the Edit Formatting Rule dialog box, we want to change the colors. So in the Minimum section, click on the down arrow beside Color and select Blue under Standard Colors, as shown. We will leave the Midpoint section as it is, but we'll change the color in the Maximum section. So click on the down arrow beside Color under Maximum and then select Red from the Standard Colors row as shown in your course book. Turn to page 10. Along the bottom of the dialog box you'll see a preview of the range of colors that will be displayed for the conditional format. Now click on OK and then on OK again to see the changes applied as indicated in your course book. So as you can see, the application of color scales makes the information more presentable and easier to understand, particularly with the rule edited so that the colors are more appropriate for temperatures. Now save the workbook and then click to make the Catering Worksheet Uppermost as shown. The next type of conditional formatting we'll look at is Icon Sets. This is where numbers are represented pictorially by a small icon of your choice reflecting the number's relative value. And again, you may be familiar with this. As you can see, the catering worksheet shows revenue and profit figures for a catering company. The numbers on row 8 represent the variance, that is the net profit the company made, minus the profit target figure. We'll now use conditional formatting to draw attention to how successfully the company has achieved its profit target over the years. Start by selecting cells B8 to F8 containing the variance figures as shown in your course book. Now turn to page 11 and then click on the Conditional Formatting button. This time hover over Icon Sets as shown to see further categories available. You'll notice that these include directional, shapes, indicators and more. Also, sets of 3, 4 and 5 icons are available. The more icons in a set, the more precisely the values will be differentiated. We want the icon set shown in your course book, so click on this as indicated. You can now see that traffic lights are inserted to the left of the values in each of the selected cells. Click away to deselect and see this more clearly. The values are assigned amber, red and green lights respectively. And you can now see pictorially that the two worst years, that is the years with the greatest variance from the profit target, are year 2 and 3. 
Save the workbook. Turn to page 12. Now click back on the exams worksheet. Earlier in the module, we applied conditional formatting to the examination marks in column C using data bars. For this type of data, it may be more appropriate to set a condition relating to a specific value and apply a format to indicate whether that condition has been met. In this case, the condition will relate to a pass mark and the format will indicate the student's grade. The first step is to clear the conditional formatting we applied earlier. Click on the Conditional Formatting button, then hover over Clear Rules, and then click on Clear Rules from Entire Sheet, as shown. The data bars have now disappeared and the percentages are showing again. I'd like you now to key in the headings and percentages shown in your coursebook. So do this now and then return to the audio. Thank you.